All righty. So let's go ahead and get started. So thank you for joining my presentation on the future of maker experiences within Power Apps. Uh, my name is Matthew Bolaños, and I'm a senior program manager on the Power Apps team. And my whole goal in life is to make sure that all of the experiences that you uh, make stuff in within Power Apps look, feel, behave the same, so that as you jump from screen to screen, from designer to designer, uh, from canvas app designer to model driven designers, it all feels the same so that you can transfer your knowledge uh, from one place to the next. Now before I get into the future, I like to go back into the past a bit and kind of walk through how we got to where we are today. So for those of you that were with the Power Apps community way back in 2016 when we started, uh, you'll know that we started with uh, Canvas apps, or what we call Canvas apps today. You can, of course, drag everything in, add buttons, fields, galleries, forms. It's probably what you've seen a lot of uh, during the conference your last two days. It was great for building pixel-perfect designs, but if you wanted to build an enterprise application with 10, 20, 30 different screens, it was a bit tedious. So our sister team over in Dynamics, they had a platform called XRM at the time, uh, allowed you to build a bunch of uh, screens really quickly uh, based on a model, hence the model-driven apps that we uh, have today. And so we had these two different platforms, these two different ways of building applications. And so as a team, we decided to merge them. So just over a year ago, in March of 2018, we combined them, and that's what we have today as Power Apps. And this is really great, because now you can use both of these tools to build the applications for your businesses. Now the problem that we had is that after we combined these two different platforms, we had a ton of different ways of doing kind of the same thing. So on the left, uh, we had the Canvas designer, which is the most modern of all the designers. Looks very office-y. On the right, we have the, the model-driven app designer. And then within the model-driven app space, we had all of these other design experiences. Uh, basically, we have all these different components like entities, forms, views, dashboards, charts. And each of them had a different page that you went to to create or edit or author them. And if I put them all back on the screen, you'll notice that they all look very different. Uh, that's kind of what happens when you combine a bunch of different uh, 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 bits of uh, code. Uh, we had essentially three generations of designers. We had a bunch of super legacy stuff that hadn't been touched in years. We had a few things that had been updated uh, very recently, right before we merged the model-driven and canvas space. And then, of course, we had the super modern, shiny canvas designer. And so the challenge that our team had on the Power App side is how can we take all these designers and create a scalable design framework in order to uh, allow y'all to have a similar experience across all of them so that you can transfer your skills from one experience to the next. And the way we did that, the way we started, was by looking at the two most popular designers within Dynamics, the two most popular designers within the model-driven space, the view and form designer. And between the two of them, they kind of represent the, the complexity that you get within a design experience within Power Apps. On the view, it's very simple. You're just like creating a table. Uh, form, it's much more complicated. You have layout. Uh, you have rules. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. So you're probably wondering, what did we actually end up building for both of these? So if you're familiar with Power Apps, if you follow our blogs, if you follow our release notes, or just click around with the, within the products, you probably already know the answer. Uh, the form and view designer went uh, in preview October of last year. Uh, the view designer just went GA a, a month ago, and the form designer will be going GA in a couple months from now. For those of you not familiar with the new form and view designer, this is kind of the before and after. So before, very ancient, hadn't been touched in forever, uh, and this is the after. And just by glancing at it, it's actually kind of hard to tell the difference between the two. The only thing really substantially different between them is the center area in the middle, what you're actually authoring, the view or the form. And that was by design. What we wanted to create was an experience that if you learned how it worked on one side, if you knew how to drag in a field and start uh, building up your view, you knew exactly what to do when you landed within the new form designer. You had the exact same field screen that you could start dragging things in. right? So before I start demoing this and kind of showing what it's like to use 
uh, these new modern experiences. I kind of want to dissect the new maker shell. And that's what we're calling these new experiences. Uh, they all live within this maker shell that we're building on the Power, uh, the power App side. And the reason I want to dissect it is to just kind of show you the patterns that we're going to be lighting up within all of the new design experiences within Power Apps in the future. So of course we have the command bar, your property pane, your canvas. These are very common patterns within Office. Right? Your, your Word, your Excel, your PowerPoint, they all use these things so that if you, you yourselves already use those products and you're coming to the Power Platform, uh, you should already know how it works. Your business users that use these productivity tools, they should be able to leverage their knowledge of how these systems, these UI uh, systems work. Our big innovation though, the big thing that we introduced was the side pane on the left, uh, what we originally called a tool belt. And the reason why we called it a tool belt is just like how a, a, uh, a construction worker or a, uh, a handyman has a tool belt that has all the different tools that they need to complete a task, similarly you have different drawers or pockets with all the information that you need to drag in and bring into your workspace. So in this case you have fields, you can imagine a pocket within your tool belt of different fields that you could drag onto your form or view. Uh, and there's others like a components drawer or, or uh, layers. But instead of me just talking about it, I'd love to demo uh, some of these modern experiences before I then go into some of the future stuff that we're lighting up using these UX patterns. So up on the screen, we have the modern view designer. So as I mentioned before, uh, repeatedly you could drag in different elements. You can reorder components in the header just by dragging. Uh, you can resize columns. We, of course, have the property pane that you're used to and the office products. The big thing that we're trying to achieve with our, with our shell, though, is that you should be able to complete 80 or 90% of your tasks within the central canvas region. You can hide the drawer if you don't need it. In the next few weeks or months, we'll be hiding the, allowing you to hide the property pane as well. And if you need to do tasks, you should be able to find some way of being able to inline interact with your uh, designer. So for example, if I want to filter or sort, I of course could use the property pane. Or a more intuitive way of using it would be to go into the column. Uh, that one's probably a, and sorting and then filtering, right? So we're really trying to bake in experiences directly in line. You can even add new columns without going into the, dr uh, the drawer. You might be asking why have the drawer in the first place. The drawer and property pane are great if you want to do, for example, bulk ads, or you want to do some more complex behaviors like uh, conditional logic for your filters. So that's the view designer. In the form designer, same sort of deal. You have your, your fields list that you can easily just drag in uh, and have it pop up. It's, as I mentioned before, it's a more complicated designer. So you can see we have different drawers or pockets with components that you can drag in. For example, uh, a one column section. That's now in my, my form. And you can even see within the Canvas Designer where we're starting to pick up a lot of these patterns. So slowly we've been removing items within the ribbon so that it's simpler, so that we can eventually collapse it into a single line command bar. Um, and most recently we've introduced the side pane, the tool belt, within the Canvas Designer. Right now it's pretty simple. It actually just has one pocket. Uh, but we're going to be lighting up soon the ability to insert controls or components from here. So this insert tab will actually be going away. And all of these items that you see in that row will appear as elements in a drawer. We think this is improving because finally you'll be able to search for different components instead of having to hunt for them in all these different drop downs. We'll also be adding the data pane and some of the items that are hidden in the backstage, like collections and variables. So instead of having to constantly jump back and forth between uh, this area and uh, the front stage, it'll all be available to you as drawers, which will hopefully speed up the app creation experience. Okay. So I want to jump back. 
The other thing that we noticed is that as we were making improvements to the designers themselves, the actual connective tissue, the navigation between these different designers was fundamentally broken. So I don't know how many of you have used Dynamics or model-driven apps before. Any show of hands? Okay, so a few of you. So you're probably familiar with like all the windows that sort of just like spawn out and all the different tabs. Uh, and by the end of your day, if you're spending an entire day working on a solution, uh, you, you essentially have a desktop full of windows and you don't know what's going on. So what we did is we introduced two different patterns to help alleviate some of that pain. So if we go back to our view designer, one of the things that we lit up was the ability to complete common tasks that originally required you to go to different screens. So for example, if I needed to create a new field on the entity to show inside of my, my view, I would before have to go back to the portal, go to one of my entities, look for uh, the fields list, and then once this page uh, finally loads, add a field. And then once I'm done with that, then I have to go back and find the view I was editing. Today, uh, since uh, the view designer went GA, we actually now have a simple new field button within the drawer that just pops open the exact same fields pane. So we're going to find as many opportunities over the next semester, the six months to a year, where we can embed these experiences so that you don't have to leave uh, where you're currently editing. The other thing that we did was provide a drill in, drill out experience so that you don't have to spawn all these different tabs. So to demonstrate that, I'm actually going to go back to the portal and show what it's like to enter in a view and leave it. Uh, before I do, though, you might notice, or you might have noticed in the last month or so, the URL has changed for the Power Apps portal. So it used to be web.powerapps.com. It's now make.powerapps.com. Uh, that might be, seem like a very small cosmetic change, but under the hood, it actually represents tremendous amount of effort on our side to actually change the underlying infrastructure of our portal so that it's exactly the same as our modern designers. So you'll see all of our modern designers, form and view, also have this make.powerapps URL. And this says two things. One is it allows us to uh, light up this drill-in, drill-out experience that I'm about to demonstrate. And two, because performance is a key thing that we care about within the Power Apps team, and because we baked it in from the start in this new maker shell, we were able to make the portal dramatically faster. So just to demonstrate, I have side-by-side -side comparisons of the old website, so web.powerapps.com, and the new make.powerapps.com. I just want to show you what the loading experience is now like. I want to start them at the same time. So boom, already on the right, we have the new maker shell. This one finally loads up. Uh, as we add more things into this new maker shell, you're going to get not only UX alignment so that you can transfer your skills across from designer to designer, but everything will also get incredibly faster. If I reload this page real quick, you'll notice we load the left-hand navigation before everything else almost instantaneously so that people can start navigating even before all the content's loaded. And it's those little things that really help the perceived performance to actually help you all uh, uh, feel like the, the product's snappier. OK. So if I come back over here, let's actually see what that drill in and drill out experience looks like. So if I go into a particular entity and I click on Views, I can open up a view. And before, this would open up in a new tab. Today, though, what will happen is we'll open up in the same line, in line, See, no new extra tabs. And we've now lit up a back button. And if you click on this back button, you'll actually go to back where you were. Now, this seems pretty small, right? We just lit it up for views and forms. But as we get more things in the shell, it really lights up these linear tasks across multiple components. And that's what I'd like to show you next uh, with our future of Power Apps workspaces. So this is all, what I'm about to show you is stuff that we haven't built yet. Uh, we're just in the design phases. I would expect over the next six months to a year, uh, these things will be lighting up. So this is all kind of like brand new uh, things that I'll be showing you. Okay. So let's go to my prototype. So one of the first things you'll notice, this is kind of like a modern look at the, the Canvas designer, is that the header's purple. 
uh, all of Microsoft is actually uptaking a new common header uh, that's already live on office.com. Uh, we, we've seen on Twitter that people are complaining that, hey, the, the waffle behaves differently, the me controls are different across Microsoft products. Uh, by October, most of Microsoft's products will all have the exact same 48 pixels at the top. The other thing you'll notice is the commanding service has been simplified from a ribbon to a command bar, and we ha now have this uh, uh, tool belt on the left. Now, if you read through our release notes, you'll see that we're trying to integrate some of the model-driven components within Canvas apps. One such, such example is views. Instead of having to define all the filter logic of galleries, you should be able to just use a view from your common data service. Now, when you are in a Canvas app and you want to edit that view, instead of popping in a new tab, we want to use that same drill in and drill out experience for you to easily double click on the control and then jump instantaneously inside of the view designer. Your tool belt will change so that it's specific to the tools that you need for that particular job, which is adding and removing fields from this view. And then once you're done, you'll easily be able to jump back out so that you can continue work on your Canvas app. Now, there are instances where you don't want an inline experience. You want multiple tabs. You want to have concurrent components open at the same time. So we're going to allow you to command click on a component. And we'll actually manage your workspace virtually for you. So instead of having a bunch of browser tabs that you then have to manually clean and close and uh, open back up, we'll keep them here. And the value of that is the next time you open your app, the next time you open a solution, we'll actually remember what your workspace looks like and just reopen all those components. And if you do need to open it as a new tab, maybe you need to drag it out as a window, uh, maybe you have like three different monitors and you want uh, a component per monitor, you'll still be able to do that with the, uh, uh, this button right here. And so you'll be able to easily make changes to components and they'll instantly be updated on er other parts of uh, Power Apps. Now, the last thing I want to share with y'all is we're actually trying to take this maker shell, this infrastructure that we're building for Power Apps, and share it with the rest of the Power Platform, including Flow and Power BI. What we want to be able to do is right now in Canvas uh, Apps, if you want to edit a flow, you go into your list of flows, you click Edit, and it takes you to the Flow website, and it's a completely different experience. It's very confusing. Instead, what you should be able to do is go to, say, your drawer of flows, click Edit, and instead of jumping out to flow.com, you'll actually stay within Power Apps and get the Flow modern experience uh, with the exact same UI with the, the tool belt, the property bar, and the command bar. So that's probably longer running out, It'll probably be a, a year before that's all done. Uh, but that's kind of the vision that we have in place for the entire Power Platform. You should be able to leverage all of the, the best pieces of the Power Platform and be able to assemble them to wire them all up together in line without having to jump between three different websites. And with that, uh, I'd like to conclude my presentation uh, and open up to questions if, if people have them. Thank you.